Good morning, good morning, good morning to everybody out there in Amazon land. Welcome to Ryan's Remote Work Hangout. I am Ryan. I'm one of the live stream hosts out here on Amazon. I talk a lot about remote worker gear. That is things like desks, chairs, laptops, monitors, keyboards, printers, paper shredders, stuff like that. So if you have questions on any of that stuff, please let me know and I will try my best to help you out. Okay, Whew. it is, here you know, we're gonna update the calendar today. It is January 31st, I don't know about anybody else, but can you imagine we have already flown through the first month of 2023. We are 1 12th of the way done with 2023 so this year is moving right along hopefully all of your new year's resolutions are still holding steady hopefully you're staying up with those otherwise you know you can start a february resolution as well anyhow i am going to jump out to amazon real quick just to make sure what i'm seeing over here Good morning. Welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. All right, and then I'm going to move that over to a different screen. Put it over there. All right, well, what's on the agenda for today? What do we have in here? And then I will get to the question of the day. We've got a little bit on monitors at the beginning of the carousel. Uh, then we have some Wi-Fi stuff to talk about, the Amazon Eero Mesh Wi-Fi router and some of the TP-Link products. Then I did throw in my men's extreme motion jeans that I happen to be wearing today. They were on sale, so I threw them into the carousel today. If you're looking for some jeans, I they're my third pair of the extreme motion, so if you are interested in those, uh, today might be a good day to pick them up. Nice thing about them, you can order them, you can try them out. If you don't like them at home, you can you can send them back. You can even put them in as part of your try before you buy program where you can select a whole bunch of items and you don't get charged for those until they've been at your house like 10 days, I think. So it gives you a chance to try them all on and then send the ones back that you don't want and you can just keep all the ones you do want to pay for. A uh, couple of rocket books in there then the microsoft 365 family is on sale today and this one i always love to talk about when this one goes on sale it has a 12 month subscription uh to the microsoft 365 family here but you get a 50 dollars amazon gift card with this and here's what I wanted to tell you. Here's my favorite thing to use the Microsoft 365 family for. Uh, it is fantastic for you if you've got a lot of people in your family because it comes with five licenses for one plus five more people. So that would be six licenses. Each license comes with its own one terabyte of OneDrive space available. So most of the members of my family have this, I, my youngest who's seven, she, I don't think she has this for herself, but everybody gets one terabyte of cloud storage and you can set up your Android phone or your uh, Apple phone to automatically upload your photos into OneDrive so then you can see them on your phone. It's really pretty cool. Uh, so I use that, plus you get copies of Word, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint, uh, I think you get the to-do list. Let me tell you, I don't know what Microsoft Editor is. That's a new one for me. You also get OneNote, which I use uh, with my Rocket Books a lot, but those are the things that come with the 365. It's on sale today, $99.99, plus you get a $50 Amazon gift card. So if you've never had the Microsoft 365, family pack before now's a great time to jump in and get that one uh joanna says hey hey uh i actually have a valid a valid what 
All right, what else is in here? Oh, I do have a little bit about televisions because there's some pretty good deals on uh, Fire TVs going on today. So I put a few of those in my carousel. Joanna says, Microsoft, you have a valid Microsoft 365 in Office. Are you doing their little merge thing? Uh, what are you saying? Uh, am I doing their little merge thing? Oh, 365 in Office are doing... Yes, yes, they are. I get what you're saying. You're giving a discount <coughs> uh, to like five... Actually, if you... It depends on how many accounts you need it for. If you just get a Microsoft 365 personal, if you're one person, I think you can install the things on your phone and... You know what? I should look, at, I should look into this. How many different computers can you install all that stuff on? Because you can install it on a couple different accounts and on a couple different computers. But let me, let me, let me just do a quick search on this. I was going to look this up, Joanna, because that's that's a good question that I maybe should know the answer to. So I think this is how it works. Uh... Here's, what I, here's how I think this works, Joanna. You can use this on as many different devices as you want because here it says enjoy the flexibility to use multiple PCs, Macs, iPads, iPhones, Android phones. I think you can use whatever devices you have as long as you're using the same login and the same Microsoft account with all of, across all of those devices. So if me... Ryan Swanstrom used to, wants to use it on my phone, I can. If I want to use it on my iPod, I can. If I want to use it on my laptop, I can. If I want to use it in a browser on somebody else's computer, as long as I'm logged in as Ryan Swanstrom, I can use it on whatever devices. But you are totally right when you said uh, it's better than paying monthly for this. Yes, it totally is, especially this first year if you can get it for $99 with the $50 Amazon gift card. It's a pretty good deal right there. I just, I have it for all of my family members. And I mean, I typically pay more than this. Uh, Joanna says, yeah, it mentions access on mobile. Yes, you can. And so I have some of the office apps installed on my mobile phone as well. I don't use all of them. I actually currently think I maybe only have Excel downloaded on my, on my phone right now. I don't write Word documents on my phone, so I don't need that one. I don't make PowerPoint presentations. No, that's not true. I also have Outlook installed on my mobile device. So those are two that you may want on your mobile device, Excel and Outlook. The reason you might want Excel is if somebody sends you an Excel document, you need Excel to open it. I think if somebody sends you a Word document, typically something else on your phone can open a Word document. Uh, Joanna says, cool. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. I'm paying like seven eighty five a month right now. Uh, I mean, I can use the free version of all, but I don't know. Uh, I don't let my free trial expire, but Joanna, I see I'm just, I'm just going to check quick for you. So hold on because I, I don't know. Just hang tight here for a second. Because they they you don't have to buy the family version unless you want to share it with other people. I think you can buy the individual version. I don't know if it comes with the gift card though. I'm trying to look.
you know, so here's the thing. That is not what I meant to type out there, but that is the question of the day. Oh, I am just trying here. That is the ASIN of the Microsoft 365 individual version. It is $58 right now. Uh, but you only get one subscription there with it. So honestly, right now, if you know you're going to be shot, continue shopping on Amazon, you're probably better off buying the family subscription and only using one of uh, those logins. You can also share it with somebody else if you want to. Uh Joanna says, Kay, and I see they have personal family and office for students. Right now, I think I would say the 365 family with the $50 gift card today is the best buy of any of them. It's better than just buying one individual subscription. You'll pay $58 for that, but you don't get the $50 Amazon gift card. So you're better off buying the 365 family account today. Uh, you said it also comes with storage. And yes, it comes with one terabyte of OneDrive space which is a lot uh, per account on it. So the family one, you'll end up with six accounts that each can have one terabyte of storage space. So that's plenty of storage space for a lot of people there. Uh, can't beat free gift cards. You cannot beat free gift cards there. So it's great. I don't really know what the difference. I think if you are running a small business, they recommend you buy the business subscription one. I, I think if you're a student, they have a little bit of a discount for students. Honestly, uh, the one I'm looking at, the office for students isn't, isn't really that great of a deal. Microsoft 365 is the way to go. Either go with the personal or go with the family version. And right now I think the family version is the best deal that is out there. So, whew. Uh, Joanna says, yeah, my poor Dropbox free overflowed a while back. Yes, I love having Microsoft OneDrive for some of that storage space. I mentioned earlier, I back up all of my photos. You can set up your Android phone or your iPhone to, you can connect it to OneDrive. You can install the OneDrive app, connect it, and then in there, when you install it, it gives you the option that says, do you want to automatically back up your photos? And it will. And you just say, say yes. And it automatically backs up your photos to OneDrive. So then you can see them on your computer. You can see them on your phone. It's pretty cool and pretty slick. It's a nice way to just keep track of your photos. Uh, Joanna says, I'm just me. I work from home, but I do enjoy the real word and use Excel some. Yeah, they are great. It's, it's useful to have the applications, especially if you use them, uh, especially if, if you feel like you're going to have the need for them. Uh, you got spoiled to the interface and outlook when... My work paid for that because of Teams. And Microsoft Teams is pretty nice as well. I, you usually have to uh, be a business to get Teams, uh, which I have it for my business, but most individual users don't really need Teams. Trying to look, I don't think. I don't think they have teams. 
All right. Well, uh, <laughs> you don't use any of those Teams applications anymore for video calls or things like that. All right. Well, that's okay. Okay. What else do we got? I was, I was zipping through. Uh, we might come back to Microsoft 365, but maybe not because we just talked about it quite a bit. Uh, I did say we we're going to talk about a few televisions during the show. Uh, there are some deals on some smart scales, and I've been a pretty big fan of these smart scales. And now I realized I didn't weigh myself this morning, but I got up really late this morning and I kind of missed out on, I was supposed to show, start my show an hour ago, but I didn't wake up until an hour ago. So my show is a little bit behind. <laughs> uh, Joanna says, just like being able to type something up and sharing when needed. It is really nice. You can, it's also pretty easy to share links to large files if you have OneDrive because you can click on any file, right click and say share this and it gives you a URL. You can share that URL with anybody and share with them that file, even if it's a really large file, maybe a video or you know a picture or something. Sometimes your email won't take images or files over a certain size. You can just share them a link to that file and then they can open it and see it. So I've noticed that's been quite helpful as well. Sorry, stream hog. You don't have to apologize for being a stream hog here. So we'll talk about some smart scales a little bit. There are still a number of great deals on men's electric razors. So I put a couple of those out there. <laughs> Joanna says, yes, hate that your file is too large. Yes, share a link from Microsoft OneDrive. It works pretty easily uh, when you can do that. You can even put expiration dates on it. So maybe you want to share a video with somebody, but you only want it to be available for, you know, an hour or two. You can do that or a couple of days. So it's kind of cool. I'm a big fan of Microsoft 365, but full disclosure, I did used to work for Microsoft uh, five, six years ago or so. So. I was a big fan of Microsoft. I, I still am a pretty big fan of Microsoft. They do some cool things at, at that company. Oh, what else is out here? Panasonic electric razor, the Philips Norelco electric razor, the bronze, their razors are on sale. And yes, all of those then And a couple of vacuums on sale, Tineco, Tineco, uh, has the their Hero cordless vacuum, the A11, on sale, $50 coupon on that today. I kind of thought it was a lightning deal. I think I have a few lightning deal items in here. A couple of Flexispot desks at the end, or just a couple of desks. There are two really good uh printer deals today the 4155e and the 7955e are both on sale today i have both those the 4155e is actually sitting on the shelf right back there the 79 well the 7955e is essentially in this box right here but both of them would make great home printers for you and a space heater then Joanna says, I have uh, I have the very last chair in the carousel, the Habda. You've got it with white arms. That is a decent chair. Honestly, I had that at my house uh, for quite a while last year. I did. Uh, I got rid of it not too long ago. Uh, what did I, I don't remember if I gave it away or if I sold it to somebody who needed a chair. I don't think I have it at my house anymore. Just, I have so many chairs I have to cycle them through and I cannot keep them all at my house, but I did really like that habit of chair. I would say for that habit of chair, it's a good chair. If you're a little bit smaller than me, 
So if you're under six foot tall, under 200 pounds, I think that habitus chair, great chair. It is on sale 129 and there is, join the, uh, throughout this info, there's an extra $10 coupon with it. So $119.99, great deal there. Uh, <laughs> it needs some WD-40. Uh, Joanna says I'm fun sized. <laughs> okay, we'll just go with that. Fun sized. Yeah, I when I had that chair, my uh, my well, he would have been 11 at the time. My 11 year old sat in it for most of the year, and he really liked it. But he, obviously, he's not as large as me. I sat in it for a little bit, but it just wasn't my favorite. I think it was a little bit small for me, which is why I say that. If you are a little bit larger. Uh, I really, I'm a really big fan of the Lindsay home ergonomic mesh chair right here. I, I really like that chair. It is, it is very good there. Joanna says I'm under the size you mentioned. So you're under the, uh, six foot tall, 200 pound range. All right. I, it's not really information that I need to know, but, uh, <laughs> oh, all right, now I'm going to zip us back to a couple of other things. Get to the question of the day. Uh, well, now you do. I guess I do know that information. Uh, all right. Well, I, I don't know. Miss Ryan, Emily is her name, Swanee Mom. Uh, I don't think she's going to come after you. Uh, okay. Where was I going? Question of the day. That's what I was going to next. So question of the day. Uh, I ask one of these just about every day here on the live show. Sometimes it focuses on remote work. Sometimes it focuses, you know, sometimes it's remote work. Sometimes it's Amazon deals. Sometimes it's current events and sometimes it's kind of nothing else. Today, mine is really kind of just a nothing else, but I went on a trip the last couple of weeks and I had the opportunity to fly on an airplane and sit next to, you know, complete strangers when you get on a plane. I actually didn't because I sat in the three seats and one of my sons sat on each side of me, but my wife sat in the seat with my youngest daughter, and then a couple of my other kids sat in a row and a other person got to sit next to them. But it brought up this question for me. When you fly on an airplane, do you talk to the stranger next to you? Some of you might answer, well, by the end of the flight, we're no longer strangers anymore. We're now friends because some people do that. Anyhow, my wife is one of those people that loves to talk to the person that sits next to them. I'm typically on the side of I don't talk to those people. So that's that's my answer to the question of today. Uh, Joanna says, I've never flown by myself, so I don't know. Well, did you, did you ever have an empty seat next to you? Because you don't have to fly alone. Even if you fly with one other person, somebody ends up sitting if you get in those three seaters, I don't know. Depends on how you fly. Maybe you don't know the answer to that. So just guess, Joanna, if you went, maybe it doesn't have to be flying. If you go sit somewhere next to a stranger, do you talk to them? I don't know. But I'm, I'm one of those people I don't. Uh, Joanna, I'm just here for the entertainment and to entertain. Uh, before the end of the world, yes, no doubt. Today, who knows? I'm kind of a chatty Kathy when I get to know you, but with a stranger, eh, window seat all the way. So, <laughs> Joanna, you'd be one of those people that may not say anything, but if somebody started the conversation with you and seemed nice, you'd talk their ear off the whole way home, uh, the whole flight. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So, there we go. But that's the question of the day. So, if you happen to have any thoughts on that one. Uh, throw the answer out there. <laughs> Depends on their friendliness level and BO level. I don't know. Uh, 
sometimes I, I wonder about this myself. I'm like, would somebody else want to talk to me? My friendliness level. Sometimes I'm friendly when you talk to me. And sometimes I kind of just, so, you know, when you have a conversation with a stranger, some people in the world, you're like, they were such a good conversationalist because they listened to what I was saying. And then they ask good follow-up questions. And it makes it really easy for the conversation to just roll along. If I don't want to, you know, continue that conversation, which kind of comes off as not super friendly, I will just provide one word answers for their question. Where are you going? Dallas. What are you going to see there? Work. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, people, people typically get the hint that I don't want to talk to them, but it comes off as unfriendly. <laughs> if you're not scary and don't stink, I'd play along. It passes the time. So anyhow, it depends on the mood I'm in. Sometimes I'm all for it, and sometimes I would rather just not have to deal with it. But that is just me. All right. I got to get out my paper shredders because I think I got stuff to shred. But also along the lines here, I have other things to get together. I don't feel like my office ever gets caught up and gets cleaned. So I... <laughs> Joanna says, I'm pretty in tune with people and emotions, so I would be able to notice most of the time in the conversation. I, I think we've all experienced this, like when you... When somebody just like catches the clues that you don't want to continue the conversation, like if you're just giving one word answers and kind of not engaging in the conversation, typically people give up. It's just, we've all experienced a time where you've like wanted to end the conversation or wanted it to be done and the other person didn't catch on. We've all had to deal with that, but I have some paper shredding to do here. My office is a complete cluster. Uh, been that way since all before Christmas. I just keep thinking that one of these days I'm going to clean up my office and it's just magically going to be a fantastic, you know, beautiful arrangement and everything's going to be organized and no mess in it at all. I don't know that it's ever happening. <laughs> go, go, go. You have a whole trash can that needs shredded. Well, I have a couple of shredders out here. This one is the Bonsai 10 sheet. And see, I'll even back us up just a little bit here so that we can see it. This is the Bonsai 10 sheet cross cut shredder. This would make a great choice for uh, home users, remote workers, anything, anyone like that. Uh, as would. The next paper shredder that I'm going to talk about, but let me plug this in, turn on my Geniverse. Oh, wow. My Geniverse is down to 35% power. I thought it was powered up. I better, better turn that on. Better charge up my Geniverse. Oh, I got a large stack of papers today. I think I even got some. Some old checks that maybe need to be shredded. So, uh, <laughs> your stack of papers that need to be shredded, glaring at you from get out and start shredding them. So, here's what I say with paper shredders some things that matter. How many sheets of paper can it handle? This is a 10 sheet paper shredder. Uh, how many sheets of paper can it handle? Does it do credit cards and staples? This one does credit cards. And staples, it's got a little slot with a picture right on the front that says, here's where you put the credit card and you put it in vertically. So most of your shredders that are eight sheets and above can handle credit cards and staples real well in there. So how many pieces of paper can it handle? Does it do credit cards and staples? What's its continuous runtime? So if you've never bought a paper shredder before, this is something you need to think about. 
they have a time limit that they run before they overheat. And a lot of times in just traditional home user paper shredders, it's three or four minutes. I think this one is four, maybe five minutes on the 10 sheet right here. But a lot of times that's enough because if you just keep up with your shredding every week, you don't end up with the huge stacks. I have a pretty stall, tall stack of papers right here that needs to be shredded, but I, I think I can do it with this one. I, I may actually switch out and use two of my shredders in here. Uh, yes, yeah, so before blowing a gasket. Yeah, that is true. What happens though, when they overheat, they just turn off and they stop working. There's an, I think, yeah, there's an overheat light on top of it. I've never gotten the overheat light, but uh, it's on top of it right there in case you happen to overheat it. So how many sheets of paper can you handle? Does it do credit cards and staples? What's the continuous runtime? And uh, let's one. is it cross cut? I will show you what cross cut means at the end. Paper shredders used to cut things into long little strips. They just shredded down your paper. Now they cut it. They call it cross cut because they cut it into strips and they cut those strips in little tiny chunks called cross cuts. So I got to shred what I think is some old checks here. So let's just shred those things. And to prove our point here on staples, <clears throat> this right here, this document, maybe you can see that. It, it has, you can't even tell. Right up here, there is a staple in it. We're gonna send this through. I think this is about four sheets of paper right there. You can see, the tiny little chunks falling through there. It's got a staple over here. It just went through. You don't even really, you don't even really notice the difference when the staples go through. So it handles them no problem. All right. And <laughs> Joanna says, I have a heavy duty credit card shredder, uh, paper eater. That makes sense. Dano says, hi, Ryan. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, Dano. It's still really cold here. Uh, hey, Dano, no stringy. Check those. Check those still exist. All right, Dano says, answer to the question of the day. I usually don't talk to the person next to me. I usually watch a movie. Most of the time, the person next to me doesn't want to chat. Well, that's okay. I said my wife likes to talk to the person next to her, so she almost always We'll choose to do that. I'm one of the people that I'm usually a no, but sometimes I can be kind of friendly. Uh, Joanna says it will really mess you up if it's not staple friendly. I could believe that. Here, I got another. Hold on. I One of these I think I wanted to save. So some of these, I think I was going to save that and that. So here we go. There's another document. This one also has a staple on the top of it. Look at that. Look at that. Chunking right through there. Fantastic. Here's regular notebook paper. Here is, I don't know what that is, just a piece of paper. Or again, I don't know what this is, but we're going to shred it.
Joanna says, oh, yeah, speed of the shredder also counts. I, I think the speed of the shredder maybe counts, but I think it's probably less important than some of the other things as well. But just because I like to just have a shredder at my house, and if you use it every day or every so often, it's not really a big deal. Uh, you just shred, you know, a handful of papers, five, six papers every day, and then the speed doesn't really matter. The problem comes from when you do what Joanne is doing here and you build up that huge stack in your office and then it becomes an overwhelming task to shred. You're so much better off if you just shred the papers right when you get them or every Tuesday morning you get up and you shred some papers. Uh, Dano says, oh, I can be friendly. Like if we are going to Disney and they have kids and know that they are going to Disney, then I have to talk to them about it. Uh, I'm not good at starting a conversation. Oh, I could, nah, I don't want it. I'm not a fan of Disney, so we're just going to skip over that. Mikey likes it. He'll eat anything. Could just burn, but what's the fun in that? It is kind of fun to burn some things. I do have a actual credit card here that I was going to send right down the middle. Yep. So you can see the little chunks of the credit card. Cuts them up real nice. Alamo rental car agreement here. Let's get rid of that. More from Alamo. Oh, it's chunking through that one. All right, since we're done with this paper shredder, we're gonna we're gonna move over to the Bonson. Of course you do. You have checks. I, I do have checks. Uh, occasionally, I need to write a check. So a few years back, maybe almost 10 years ago now, I, I went with a checking account. I decided to go with some banking account that didn't have paper checks because I thought, you know, it was 2012 or whatever year it was. And I was like, I'm going to be trendy and new and hip, and I'm going to get... A bank account that doesn't have paper checks. I'll just send my things via bill pay and use my debit card. It was a great idea until the bank, all of a sudden, one day they said, we're going to stop doing bill pay. And I almost like lost my mind here. I said, you're an online bank and you're going to stop doing bill pay. So they said, we're going to send each of you a box of checks to start writing. I was so mad at them. I was like, every bank in the world can do paper checks. The reason I went with an online bank is so that I didn't have to write and deal with paper checks. Yeah. Anyhow, then they closed and kind of went out of business and I was unhappy with that. So now I bank with a traditional local bank that has been around for 172,000 years. And, you know, so far it's great, but there's very little innovation in it. Here's what cross cut paper shredders look like right here. You end up with your documents and everything come out into these teeny tiny little pieces of paper. And it makes it very, very hard to try to put anything back to together there because just imagine trying to put that together. There's a lot of tiny little pieces. But I'm going to get out the next paper shredder, the Bonson. This is probably my favorite, the Bonson one. If I had to pick a favorite, sorry, paper shredders. I play favorites. I probably just, it was my first one, the one I picked out to buy, and I think it works uh, just great. It's an eight sheet instead of a 10 sheet, but I think it's very close as far as power is concerned here. I typically don't do eight and 10 sheets at a time anyway. I try to keep it less than that, but here I'm sending this through. This one handles credit cards and staples as well. I do see that this one's a little bit full in here. So maybe, just maybe, we might have to open this up. We might have to smash it down. 
so that I can shred some more, or I might have to get on my other shredder. One of the things when your waste paper basket fills up, that's a good time to send one of the cleaning sheets, the cleaning lubricating sheets through your document or through your paper shredder just to keep things you know properly lubricated and keep your blades sharpened and running smooth. I'm gonna shred this now. Oh, this is so much fun. I don't know about anybody else, but I really do get some serious joy and fulfillment out of shredding things. I don't know why, but it is thrilling to me to be able to shred stuff. Let me do this. I just keep shredding it. I don't know how many pieces of paper that is right there. Six to eight or so, I think. Just chunking through them. We're running out of space on the top in here. So I'm going to squish this back down again. Well, I guess it's not quite as bad as I thought. We got room. We got room. We're going to send... All right, I do see I got some comments out here. Let me get my shredding done. There we go. I also like to do this one sheet at a time and see how long you can keep it continuously shredding paper. I don't know why that's so much fun. Anyhow, I got this little booklet here. That is more than eight sheets. So we're gonna do half of this at a time. There we go. And the other half does have staples in it, but we're gonna shred it. There we go. Chop that all up. All right. Let me see if I can catch back up on the conversation out here. Joanna says, next. Dano says, I was just using that as an example. I'm better at starting a conversation if I have a conversation starter, other than trying to, other than we're flying to the same location. So why? Are you going to Denver? That seems like a little more personal, but that's just me. I can see that, Dano. You're right. If you're going to Disney, that I can see that sometimes you don't want to come off as, you know, like creepy. So where do you live? What time are you going to be there? You know, I'm, <laughs> that, that can be true. I can see that. Uh, I have a, a tough time putting the Bonson top back on after I empty it because it won't work. If the top is not on right, which is a good safety feature. Oh, I do know what you're saying. I did this live on the show one time. Uh, so, oh, we got a little bit of clogged up over there. But, yes, if you don't get the top on just right, it does not, it won't allow you to turn it on to send paper shredder through. So, if your top's a little bit crooked, it doesn't work right. So, just make sure you get the Bonson on right. Nice little feature there. All right. So that is Paper Shredder. Sometime maybe after the show, I'm probably going to have to empty out the waste paper basket there and maybe even send some cleaning paper shredder sheets through it. But I might save the paper shredder sheets for on the show just because I think that's kind of an interesting thing that a lot of people don't know you need to do. All right. So let's, let's head back into the carousel, back to the beginning. Jordan says, I haven't really had any issues with my current model. Never really counted the sheets 
I I do just because they give you a max number in it. If you've ever sent, if you send too many sheets through, it doesn't handle it very well. And it kind of gets clogged up. And like Joanna said, grr. Then you have to try to hit it in reverse and get those papers out. And sometimes stuff just gets stuck in there. And it's a whole lot easier if you've got a you know stack of 15 sheets, break it into three, five sheet chunks and shred all those rather than send trying to send 15 sheets through at a time because then you'll spend 10 minutes trying to unclog and clean out your paper shredder. So don't do that. Since we're here, the rocket book, since I've gotten home, I haven't even, I've still been using my rocket book. So I went on a plane flight and I took my smaller rocket book, the rocket book, uh, I don't remember what this is, Fusion. The rocket book Fusion with me because it's smaller and it fit in my backpack. I still haven't transitioned and snapped all the pictures of that to store off into OneNote. But I'm a big fan of the Rocket Book Everyday Planner. It sits on my desk and I use it all the time. <coughs> Excuse me. Sometimes you got to sneeze during the show. Whew. Anyhow, I'm a huge fan of those Rocket Books. They're a great way to combine the digital world with your physical handwriting world. You write on them with a Pilot Friction pen. It's an erasable pen. Then when you're done, you pull out your phone and you snap a picture of that page on your phone via the Rocketbook app. And the Rocketbook app, then uh, it can send those things out to you in email. It can save them out to Google Drive. It can save them to Microsoft OneDrive or Microsoft OneNote. I send mine to OneNote. I think you can also send it to a Slack channel, Evernote, uh, a number of different places online. It can store out those notes for you. It will also transcribe your handwriting, so it will do its best. And I think it's pretty good at this. If you write things by hand, it does a pretty good job of picking out what those words you're trying to write were and including a transcript of what was on that document. That you have. So I'm a big fan of the Rocket Books. I really, really like them. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. A couple of things on different computer monitors. The AOC 32-inch, I have this one in my office. I've had it here for a month or two. Really big fan. I like the larger size of the 32-inch and the price at $199. Great, great price. I like that when it's hanging on the wall, I can see the comments on it. From here, I can see the smaller text because it's a bigger screen. So I'm a pretty big fan of that AOC 32 inch. And another monitor, the Kuri 24 inch. If you're just looking for a secondary monitor, this one, this is the Kuri 24 inch, uh, might be a great choice. The price on this is tough to beat, $91. Good monitor. I will say this. Give yourself a couple of minutes to play around at the brightness and contrast settings to get them just how you like them. I used it. I had it in my office for a couple of months. And I would say it was a month and a half before I played around at the brightness and contrast. And then I realized that it was a lot better, nicer monitor than what I originally thought because I just played around at those settings. So do that. Also in my office... I have the Scepter 27 inch. So I have the AOC 32 inch and the Scepter 27 inch right in front of me. I think the Scepter, great monitors. A lot of people have never heard of the Scepter brand. They've been making budget friendly televisions for years. So to go to an airport, go to a restaurant, go to any kind of public place that has televisions. A lot of times they will have Scepter TVs just because they're like budget friendly, pretty good screens. That are there. Scepter, I want to say five or six years ago, decided to get into the uh, computer monitor game. And so they, they now make budget friendly uh, computer monitors. So that is Scepter. Hold on just a second here.
All right. So that's a little bit on the monitors. If you're in the work, if you're in the mood or in the market for a Chromebook, I have the Acer 315 Chromebook, which is right here. Uh, Joanna says, I still need to see or hear you talk about Rocketbook. I, you know what? I don't want to think I'm not getting money out of it. I love my rocket books, Joanna, which is why I have three of them. Uh, I'll keep talking about them. I'm sure I'll talk about them more tomorrow. Maybe I'll try to plan something to talk about them tomorrow and just how I use them a little bit more. So that this is the Acer uh, C315 from... It's, it's a Chromebook. So because it's a Chromebook, it does not have, you cannot install Microsoft Word, Office, and Excel and stuff like that on it. It's essentially, it's just a web browser. But if all you need is a web browser, so think, what can you do a web browser? You can watch YouTube videos. You can watch a lot of like your Netflix and other type of videos. You can just log into their website. Uh, you can send emails. You can do your online shopping. You can... There's a ton of things you can do in just a browser, which is why I use one and I have one because I didn't want to carry my expensive laptop everywhere with me. So I said, let's get a cheaper Chromebook that I can bring along. And so far, it's working just great. Joanna says, tell me how it works. Let me. Joanna says, I love my Chromebook. They, they really, really are great. So, Joanna, I'll maybe, I'll maybe show you. So, after I've taken pictures and all that stuff, maybe I can show you what it looks like. I upload everything to Microsoft OneNote uh, when I take my pictures. And so, mine, you can even see kind of what's in here. Product, content, checklist. October 31st week, everything is all down in here in my, uh, so here's all my PDFs of different things different notes so any of those so if i want to see what i talked about on prime day i can log in here and i maybe need to shrink that up a little bit but then it tells me what i talked about on prime day and what i had in my note section to talk about on prime day it stores the little pictures in there uh, let me see this. It does. Here, I wanted to show you this. So it will pull out your text, like my handwriting text, and store that off right there. And so you can see it turned my handwriting text into actual plain text. You can copy and paste into an email or something if you need to do that. So it, it keeps your pictures and it pulls out and stores the text. Uh, uh, Joanna says, I love my Chromebook book, but the things I needed it to do wouldn't allow it, so I switched for the same exact computer window version. I can see that sometimes there are some things you can't do on a Chromebook, and it becomes an issue for some people. Uh, Joanna said, so are they easier to find than in a computer? Well, Microsoft OneNote you can install OneNote on your computer as well. So you can have it on your phone or your computer. That's the nice thing of when you send stuff up into the cloud and, and 
into a service like Evernote uh, or Microsoft OneNote or Microsoft OneDrive. You can even do that as well because then once you get it, once you get it into OneNote, you can easily search for things in OneNote. And maybe I can just do an example here. So. Let me see if I can search for. So I just did this. So out in in Microsoft OneNote. So bring this up. If you see at the very top, there's that little search search bar and that little magnifying glass. If I type in the word Azure. Better yet, if I type in the word Joanna, it says, hello, Joanna. It brings back that note. I can click on that. Remember, Joanna, when I wrote you a note to demonstrate how it works, it's been a couple of months ago. There is the note that I wrote for you. There is the note transcribed right there. Anyhow. It, that is the Rocket Book. They are just really, really cool. You can do a lot of cool things with the Rocket Book. And so that's from December 12th. Tells me the date at the top up there. If I could get that to Monday, December 12th. So that's been over a month ago. Pretty easy to find. I just really like it. It allows you to not necessarily lose your notes quite as much as if they're just stuck in a notebook. I do see we've got new visitor, new visitor here today, uh, Donald Halstead. Donald Halstead started following. Hello, Donald. Welcome to the show. My name is Ryan. I'm one of the live streamers out here. I talk a lot about remote worker type of gear. We were just talking about the Rocket Book reusable notebook, but if you happen to have any questions on other uh, uh, notebooks and other or if you have questions on other remote work products desks chairs printers let me know i'll try my best to answer those for you and joanna said unforgettable in every way i i evidently remembered that note so it wasn't unforgettable and will it let you use a pen style the notebook does not the notebook you have to use the included pilot friction pen right here which is it's a it's a regular erasable pen from Pilot, but you do have to use the Pilot friction pens with the Rocketbook notebooks. But uh, the app on your phone, like OneNote or whatever, you can use whatever stylus or thing you want on your phone if you want to. That works fine. Uh, Joanna says, hey, you. Yes, you. Be like Donald and smash that follow button. There you go. It's either, yeah, we don't know where that follow button is. Typically, it's right down here. Sometimes, depending on if you're on a phone or a mobile or a laptop or a desktop, it might be up above. And sometimes I think it's over there. Anyhow, it's around the screen somewhere. Anyhow, thanks, Donald, for stopping by. <laughs> Joanna says, I mean, uh, I got muted and kicked off for defending you not being large in size well uh i have i've had had to go to the doctor a few times over the last couple of weeks and one of the tests that they ran on me they compared it against like to your body size like the size of my heart should be proportional to the rest of my body and they're like you're in the pretty large body size category so even the doctor thought i was in a larger body size category i'm six foot tall 240 response. I'm kind of a big dude. Anyhow, uh, we already talked about this in the show, but Microsoft 365, this is one of the better deals in the show today. You get the Microsoft Office and you get all the Microsoft Office products for yourself and five other people. So that's up to six people get access. That means you can download and install Word, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint, on all of your computers and your mobile devices for up to six different uh, Microsoft accounts. I I have it for my family. 
uh, but I have a lot of people in my family. But if you don't want it for just your family, I'm sure you could share it with another friend as well there. But it gives you access and ability to download and install all those tools. Plus, this alone is worth it, regardless of whether you use any of the Microsoft apps. Uh, it comes with one terabyte, one terabyte of online cloud storage space in Microsoft OneDrive for each of those six accounts. So what that means is that each person has one terabyte of space that they can back up and store their photos and they're saved out in the cloud. Uh, so you can access those pictures from any internet browser. The nice thing I use is I take pictures on my phone. I have the OneDrive app installed on my phone. So once I take the pictures, they automatically get uploaded into the pictures folder in my OneDrive account. So then when I log onto my computer, I can see the pictures I just took on my phone. And I can see them on my computer. It's really, really great. I'm a huge fan of that. That alone is more than worth the price if you pay for it. Uh, but right now you can get it for $99.99, plus you get a $50 Amazon gift card with it. So the price of $99 is just great. It's a fantastic price for the Microsoft 365 family. When they throw in the $50 gift card, it becomes an unbelievably great deal. So there you go. Uh, Joanna says, and talk about plugging the wrong plug into a foreign outlet. I've never done that. It causes fire. So I have to be correct. I haven't done that, but Mr. Marco knows a little bit about that. Joanna says, thank you, thank you. Uh, all right. And then I was going to continue moving through a couple of other things here. The Hisense Fire TVs. I had this one behind me as the Insignia Fire TV. I think they ran out of stock on that one. But <laughs> I mentioned it on the stream and bye-bye. All right. Well, be careful with those foreign outlets and plugins. As well, so Hisense. Hisense makes Fire TVs. I'm a huge fan of the Fire TVs. I just think they're really, really great, and the prices are pretty good on them. If you need to hide some cords on the wall, like over here, this is called Cord Cover Raceway. And also, the larger TVs, the the sort of the nicer Fire TVs. Amazon came out with their. Uh, Omni QLED Fire TVs, and I have the 65-inch version in the other room. It's on sale for $549. All around a fantastic television. The thing I really like about that one is you can just kind of talk to it. It's got the Amazon Assistant built in, so you can talk to it to have it change channels, turn up and down volume, and a lot of those nice things. Joanna says, I've never been anywhere, but I know I've seen what tinfoil did to the microwave. I've never tried that either. Uh, and some other things. If you need that, if you need a TV mount for a larger TV, Echo Gear makes some great wall mounts. I do have the Govi and visual lights behind my television. That's why it looks like it kind of pops a little out of the wall there. And, oh, I wanted to highlight this Vaunt smart scale is is on sale and i thought the price of it was kind of unbelievable at 15 dollars. i have the renfo next to it and i'm a huge fan of my renfo uh smart scale here's why here's why i like it so much when i when i stand on it it gets my my weight but it also gets things like what's my body water percentage what's my body fat percentage uh, what's my, you know, skeletal mass, what's my muscle mass. It gives me a whole bunch of numbers about my health and fitness beyond just a weight. And so I really, really like that because I think tracking your body fat percentage is probably a much better thing to track than just your raw weight. So, uh, I'm a big fan. And then when I open up the app on my phone, it allows me to just pull in those numbers and it keeps a history and tracks whether those numbers are going up and down for me. So I'm a really big fan of those smart, smart scales. 
And I do have these cordless jump ropes. They do come with a cord on them if you want that as well. And here I was going to quick talk about these shavers. And then I think then I may just be done for the day because there's a lot left in my carousel. But we're going to move to that. So the Panasonic, this razor is on sale for $171. That's a fantastic price on the Panasonic electric razor. Uh, great, great deal on that 171. I'm a big fan of that. The Philips Norelco 5300 is also on sale as well. I'm scrolling through a few of these things. So if you're looking for, hold on. Joanna says, thinking about those scales, mine bit the, dut, bit the dust. It took batteries, but got to where the new batteries every needed new batteries every other week and only used it like one time a week, if that. I believe mine uses batteries. Yeah, so on the back of mine, it uses three AAA batteries. I mean, which is okay. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I, I should have said full disclosure. Renfo did send that to me for free a couple months back, but I really do like it. And I don't continue to talk about the things if I don't actually like them and use it. So I use mine just about every day. I didn't use it today because I forgot because I got up late. Uh, anyhow, onto those razors, all those razors, fantastic choice in the carousel. But I think that's probably where I'm going to end the show for today. So thanks everybody so much for tuning into the show. I'll be live, I think tomorrow, Marco and I are gonna be hosting the Homazin show. So. Johanna says, you have well made up for being late. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, tomorrow at 8.30, I'll be doing the Homazin show with Marco. So that'll be kind of fun. We haven't done one of those in a few weeks. Interesting to find out what's going on in the world of Marco. I know he's been live a couple of times. Uh, join us. Thank you for handling my entertainment. I try my best around here. Yes, it'll be 930 Eastern time, 830 Central time tomorrow morning. And since Marco's there, we typically start pretty close to on time because he keeps us uh, on time. Anyhow, thanks everybody for tuning in. Thanks for being here. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. And I guess it's not Wednesday. It's Tuesday. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. And I will see you later. Goodbye, folks.